All right. So again, welcome to today's uh, dispensing lecture series. It is more of a flexible session because I just want to take you through some of the course expectations, especially with regards to your portfolio of evidence. Um, we have already welcomed you, but also I've introduced two of our team members, um, Matome Rabotata, our IT officer, who's available to support you, but also uh, Ms. Mamo Saigekana, who's the course coordinator. We have already done the course experience and feedback because I needed to get from your side how things are going. And then uh, at this point in time, I'm going to take you through um, <clears throat> um, the how to approach your portfolio of evidence, um, which is quite important. But I also need to make you aware that now I'm, the, I'm your official instructor because uh, Mr. Johannes is no longer with um, the school. Um, and then uh, if you want timely assistance, please avoid using many other platforms, WhatsApp and Facebook. Try to use this specific email, support at aquatraining.com. This is because when you send any inquiry to this platform, we are able to generate a ticket, which you can also keep, you know, and then you can advise us anytime to say, but I did send an email, this is my ticket number and we are able to track your submission or your concern. But also on our side, uh, this helps us to respond to your needs um, 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 timely so that then we are able to resolve all tickets, which then would mean you'd be happier because all your concerns are tracked and we are able to therefore um, um, resolve them in time. Um, yes, so now I want us to go through the how part in terms of the um, um, dispensing course. So <clears throat> there is um, um, two key documents um, that you need to have at your disposal. The first one is the dispensing of medicine uh, uh, by health professionals is the guideline. Um, it's, it's got 432 um, uh, pages. Um, so my sense is that uh, if you don't have, we will, I will share these two documents again via your WhatsApp groups because these are quite um, important and they have uh, the relevant content and materials that you need for you to complete the course successfully. Now here I'm gonna talk about the assessment guide, how you are going to be assessed. And uh, I'll be guiding you also um, when I take you through um, this particular um, document in terms of um, which uh, sections you should pay attention to and how you go about um, studying the online course in terms of the knowledge because at the end you have to write the test but also you have to submit your portfolio of evidence to show that you have learned. So you'll see that this document has about 45 pages and I would like to take you quickly through some of them uh, because it will be quite helpful um, to understand. So the first thing is that the portfolio of evidence is uh, very important, right? And for you to get it right, you have to read, you know, you have to read your study guide, um, this document that I'm going to share, the one that I said has got 432 pages, you have to go through it, you have to read it. Um, then uh, in the resource guide, there's also um, an, a, 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 a next charts and attachments that I will refer you to today just to help you quickly. And then uh, you therefore need to use this specific document, the one that I have opened, the assessment guide, um, to help you to submit your portfolio of evidence with your avidavit that you have to do and your summative assessment, which is a multiple choice question. So these three documents, um, the learner assessment, the one that I've opened, you can see it's written, um, let me show you again, um, it's written assessment guide. So you have to submit it, but it must be complete at the time when you um, submit it with an affidavit, but also with the summative assessment. When we say your portfolio of evidence is complete, we mean that you have completed these eight learning activities, right? Firstly, your affidavit is completed and signed, which confirms that the information contained in this document reflects your work. You didn't go and copy 
uh, someone else's work. The first learning activity is about evaluation of the prescriptions. Then you can see the labels, prescription records. How do you do record keeping? The calculations, a patient information leaflet, um, drug interactions, uh, case studies that you need to review. Then you have to develop at least one standard operating procedure and then also an audit of a drug supply management system in your facility. Or if you don't have a facility, you talk about the, um, how you are going to establish a drug supply management system in your future clinic or your future um, dispensary. So it's very important that you don't just go through the online course. It's good because you have to have the knowledge. At the end, remember, your knowledge will be tested through a multiple choice summative assessment but also through an open book um, examination. Though we are now changing because of COVID and making it you know, something that you will do digitally, we don't need to have a physical um, workshop or session um, with you, right? So it's very important that as part of your, your dispensing course that you supply verification of your identity. So an ID copy must also be part um, of your portfolio of evidence. Also note that if you fail to complete the course in six months time, you would need to re-register. And this, this would also include a, a, an administration fee of 500 rand. So it's very important that you complete within the timelines. Remember, we have not given you six months. We have given you three months. So try to stick to this uh, six weeks to three months. Do it once, you know, um, and complete. At the end, you require a competency certificate, right? Which is issued by um, an external assessor. And for them to assess you, they would need this specific document, which is your portfolio of evidence, the summative assessment, which is a multiple choice um, um, question, and also a practical component, um, which is supposed to be an open book um, demonstration um, that I said we are reviewing uh, to see if uh, how do we go about it. Just note that if your documents and portfolio staff are not in order, um, they would be then assessed as not yet competent and you may reapply for a reassessment, but then it includes an administration cost of 300 rands, right? So as soon as you are assessed competent, you'll receive your certificate within one month um, and then uh, we take it from there. So the first part of your portfolio of evidence, remember you're a distant learner, right? So you would have to say, I, Sister Lesohoma, well, with this ID number living in Nelspread, I declare that I'm a, a professional nurse or a doctor practicing at uh, whatever address. And I'm in the process of completing this course and then uh, you then uh, sign there with your sunk number. Uh, you sign, there's a witness, and then you take this document to your uh, post office or even um, uh, what you call a, a police station for, for the stamp to, because you are declaring that you didn't just copy, you didn't plagiarize. Whatever you are submitting, it's a true reflection. Um, of your work. So that's uh, very important. So you don't have to do this part now. You complete the whole document with attachments as needed. Then you go and do your oath uh, to confirm that this is a true reflection um, of your work, right? So um, we leave it at that. So the portfolio of evidence, we will review it and make sure that it meets uh, the standards before we submit it to Health Science um, 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 Academy. Um, the learning activities are set for specific circumstances that are presented to you. So we need proof, you know, to ensure that if you are not able to complete, you tell us exactly what the issues are. So that's quite important, right? Um, also remember, Sometimes you are assessing your own facility or where you are working. But the important thing here is to show the application of the knowledge that you have learned. Even if you're saying, well, I don't have a facility, but uh, when I now establish my facility, this is how I'm going to do things. Um, um, then we accept that. Also note that um, if you are in position of a dispensing license, it means that 
you are able to prescribe and dispense your own prescriptions, right? That's very important. Remember here you are doing the required competency training. As soon as you have that certificate, you will then apply uh, for, the, for the license with the Department of Health, which is the final um, issuer um, of such a, a license. However, without the training, a competency certificate, um, you won't be able to, to, to do that. So that's quite important, right? So let's look at the, the, the outcome. So the first thing is that you must be able to identify and apply ethical and legal, you know, um, the laws and rules that govern the drugs. You must be able to apply them in your dispensing uh, processes, especially as it relates to the prescription, validating the authenticity, interpreting the prescription and ensuring that the prescription, you know, is, is valid. So those are very um, important. And also to ensure that when you dispense or you prescribe, you take into account the socioeconomic, some people prescribe expensive drugs to people who are poor, who can't even afford them. So we will be reviewing that um, as we go on. So we evaluate, uh, outcome two is to evaluate a prescription and access to a patient or even create a patient profile. So you'll be able to look in, to combine your patient with the drugs and the clinical presentation and, and ensure that there's congruency, you know, um, end to end um, in that space. We also want to ensure that you are able to dispense a prescription. So how do we evaluate a prescription identify the different items um, that need to be um, dispensed, um, the management and procurement. So once you have the drugs, how do you manage them? How do you store medicines? And how do you ensure that you always have adequate supply such that you avoid um, stock outs? And it's very important also that you are able to provide information, you are able to advise patients and provide counseling in terms of uh, medicines, side effects, drug-drug interactions, and importantly, issues around um, adherence. So that is that. So now coming to the portfolio of evidence, right? The first one talks about evaluation of prescriptions. So you have to read this document because it says, after this is a learning activity, it means you have to learn. It's not just about doing the activity. Once we say you have completed this learning activity, you must be able to evaluate a prescription whether, in terms of whether that prescription is it legal. Is it, was it prescribed by a legal person authorized to prescribe? Uh, was it, is it valid in terms of the date? Is it authentic? You know, um, um, does it meet all the requirements, the address, the date, the credentials of the prescriber? And is it appropriate for the patient who's in front of you in terms of the drug choice, the dose and the frequency? So, so that's uh, quite important. And you can see here, you are already referred to pages uh, 4.5.3, you know, in the study unit, which I've just showed you. And I'm still going to show you um, additional um, pages from that specific um, document. So it's quite important. So at the end of each prescription, you're required to rewrite it as though you are the prescriber uh, to meet the requirements of the legality, current date, right? This is very important, otherwise you won't pass. So if there's a prescription, you have to rewrite. You are going to rewrite it now as if it is being prescribed by you currently. So you write today's date, you make sure that whatever issues were incorrect with the script that was shared uh, to you in the portfolio of evidence, you correct it. Because if there are still gaps in the prescription you are going to re-prescribe, um, you won't be able um, to pass um, that specific section. So that's quite, um, important um, to note. So this is prescription one. So you read this prescription is by they are prescribing for Mr. J. Bean. You can see there's no date there. You know, uh, doctor whoever. I'm not sure whether this practice number here is valid. The address is not clear. You know, so you're gonna have to review. You know, all these issues around this script, and you'll see that in terms of prescription one. Um, they've already evaluated it for you. So activity, right? 
uh, lava it's legal authenticity validity you know and so on so so they're saying legality that script is illegal due to missing information right so that's that's important and the quality of the signature so if you go back to it there you can't tell exactly what kind of a signature um is this one right uh, in terms of the date is present but you need to ensure that uh today's date is inserted you need to ensure that you add your sunk number somewhere there you know um the id so you read you need to read all this feedback already we, we you are giving feedback about that prescription right you are giving feedback you are giving feedback you read you read and then when you rewrite now the script you have to address um these uh, uh, gray areas um, um, in terms of that specific script, right? And then you can see now the task you have to do is to rewrite the same script, right? To meet the requirements of legality, authenticity, validity, and appropriateness. That is LAVA, L-A-V-A. So it means what you have, I'm hoping you are following, right? You have a script, right? You have already been given things that are not clear in the script, right? Now you have to rewrite the same script um, uh, here at the bottom or as an attachment, right? And ensure that now it meets all the requirements uh, 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 and it is now a correct script. I hope uh, the, the instruction is clear, right? Then uh, there's a prescription number two. Um, um, uh, you can see it's a, it's a group practice with many people um, already. Okay, there's at least one practice number. Um, there's at least one practice number and so on. So you, there's the prescription. I don't know if you can see Cephadane. I think it's an antibiotic with uh, some probiotic there. I don't want to give you answers, you know. So you'll go through it. So here there's a activity for you. So read the activity. It says draw a line through the incorrect weight from the two shaded weights. So you can see in terms of legality, is this prescription legal or illegal? So the incorrect one, you must just cross a line. You must just cross a line um, on it there uh, so that you are only left with the uh, correct uh, one. Is the date present or absent? So you have to check it there, was there a date? But it's old, right? It's not today's date. So a 2014 uh, script, you, you, you can't uh, uh, dispense it. So you'll be going on canceling. So it's like a choosing the correct weight kind of a thing. Choosing the correct weight, choosing the correct weight, choosing the correct weight, completing the gray areas, um, as necessary, you complete, you put your references for your drug interactions, and then that's it. So you rewrite prescription to now uh, to meet the requirements of LAVA. So that prescription, after you have agreed whether something was correct, something was missing, you rewrite that prescription and you put it here. Right. Then you go to prescription three uh, by the same group, it seems. So you have to evaluate, you have to have your formulary or you use drugs.com, as I will show you uh, when we do this practically um, next week, right? So, so activity, you are evaluating a prescription for, 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 for all this. So you can see that the, there's feedback that is there. Authenticity, you've got feedback. So you read, you read, you read that is not valid. And there's also issues around the dosing and the code higher code drugs, remember there's a, um, and so on. So you read, when you are done, um, then uh, you, you rewrite prescription three as a correct prescription. So you evaluate that prescription, then you rewrite it. Your, the one that you rewrite has to be correct. So that is the, the, the trick, right? And then if I was then to show you to say fine, also, before you evaluate, you know, your, your prescription, there are specific pages um, in your guideline that you would have to go through. For example, on your resource guide, which is there on the platform, but I will still um, share it with you. 
Um, if you go to page 30, I'm hoping you're writing down, but I'll share with you the pages also um, later. If you go to page 30, uh, let me see, yes, page 30. Yes, you can see legal requirements for prescriptions, right? So they'll tell you it must have a name, the qualifications, the practice number. This is page 30, the name and address of the patient, the approved name of the drug that's being prescribed, the dosage form, you know, is it the uh, syrup, solution, tablet, um, injection, age and sex of the patient. If the only road, Dr. Mawel, is not sufficient, you have to say 38 years old, male, uh, and then with the names, you know, and so on. So you have to read, that's where it comes now. That's why the on e-learning component, it's forcing you to read the content so that you can then do the specific um, learning activity um, as I have uh, showed you in terms of learning activity one, right? If we go to page 137, 137, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm typing on a wrong document. So on the guide, the, the, the where you have to read, right? 137, um, let me see if it's there. If you go to again, you know, uh, it's got additional information around identification of the patient and the prescriber. So these are requirements, you know. So there's additional information to say is she pregnant? That needs to be noted. Allergies need to be noted. Chronic diseases, you know, because some drugs are not allowed when people are taking other things. And then you can see is the details now of the establishment of the legality and authenticity, the LAVA, L A. VA of a prescription. So if you understand when we assess legality, what are we talking about? The date of issue, the address, approved name. When we assess authenticity, is it a reliable, trustworthy, you know, um, prescription? Is it valid in terms of, remember, um, uh, most prescriptions are valid for 30 days. So if it's, the date is too old, it's not valid and appropriateness, right? So you have to read these pages for you to be able to do learning activity one you have to read page 137 to 140 um, or so and then uh, you should be okay right so so that is quite key i'm hoping you are following so if you look at learning activity um i won't uh, go the dispensing labels right dispensing labels so let's go to page um, uh, on the guide again. We go to page 33, page 33, right? Come on, my page doesn't, my book doesn't want to go to page 33. 33, go, yes. So you see now, labeling of medicines is on page 33, write it down. <laughs> see, today you are getting a crash course, ne? <laughs> So there it is, the labeling of medicines. So it tells you the requirements for labeling, you know, just at a high level that there are specific requirements uh, for labeling of medicines. And then you might need to go to study unit number four for you to learn more about the labeling of medicines. And that specific page is page 141. Write it down, labeling of medicines, page 141. Aibo. I think uh, 141, yes. Yeah, so there's your page 141, preparation of labels. So labeling, so what is a good labeling? A labeling must have the name of the drug, the approved name, the name of the, uh, 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 whose, whose treatment is sold, the directions regarding how to take it. Remember the box is not part of the label. So you have to do your own label. Uh, uh, to get it right, right? So you go to page 141 before you do exercise uh, learning activity number two. So guidelines for labeling of medicines, make sure that the information is accurate, it's legible, it, it can be written nicely, intelligible, the information is simple, it's, you know, people can understand it, it's not confusing, and it is also um, adequate and relevant, All right? But let's look at what that learning activity requires. It says, once you complete this, you must be able to prepare a dispensing label and demonstrate your understandings why you should also document special warnings. So if you are prescribing a drug, 
that can cause a hypersensitivity reaction. You have to put it there as a warning, right? So that's very key. So the activity is prepare labels for prescription three items and attach below. So you go to that prescription three. Do you remember prescription three? This is prescription three. Let me take you to prescription three. The last prescription we saw. So if you were to dispense these two drugs, uh, what label would you design? And it must meet the requirements as I have shared with you from page 141 in your guide. So, so that is uh, very important. So your learning activity two is very straightforward. Ne? Just need to do the label and then uh, you win um, if, you, if you get it right, right? Um, and then um, learning activity three now is prescription records. Now these are documents that are used to document your prescription, like your, your, your prescription uh, uh, chart itself. There's a prescription register, you know, um, 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 and these are also defined very well um, if you go to um, um, your learning activity three. Uh, specifically, let's see if we go to uh, page, uh, I think it's 28. Yeah, record keeping. So the legislation states that uh, certain records must be kept. It is important to know what records are. So which records must be kept when you prescribe and how to keep them. So record keeping of schedule one medicines, the legislation does not specify. So if it's a schedule one drug, you know, you, 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 it's neither here nor there. However, you need to have a, a, a prescription book, you know, um, and then you also, which needs to be kept at the premises where you are working, and then you might need to keep it as an electronic version. And they tell you what a prescription book um, should have, like the name of, of the person, the name and the quality, quantity of the medicines prescribed, and the name of the person who dispensed it, so yourself as a doctor. So a prescription book is a requirement. So you then read about it, the reference numbers and all that. A schedule six register, right, is a legislated register that must be there. Just also know that records must be kept for up to five years, sometimes even more, right, especially for schedule six uh, medicine. So so then you need to be able to, to identify uh, which drugs are Schedule 6, and then uh, how do you manage that register? It must also have the quantities. You can see in weights. So you need to read. It says the quantity in weights and figures, not just to say it's 6 dispensed. You must write it S-I-X tablets uh, dispensed to who, when, because these are drugs that are likely to be abused uh, by people. So, so it's, it's, it's very important um, that you pay attention to such. But if you go to, to your activity, they say uh, record prescription items. So the same prescription three, which you did labels for, you are going now to record them um, on the relevant um, um, registers. So if there's a schedule one, two, three drug, this is a record. So you're gonna take this table design your own record, or even visit a pharmacy, ask them for their register, take a picture of it, then complete the drugs, but make sure that that register or prescription record meets the requirements um, as uh, explained um, here. And then this is for schedule two or higher, where you need to also include who prescribed and the quantity. Remember if it is schedule six drug, you must also write it in words make sure that it meets all the requirements. And you can see this is a schedule six register. You can either visit your clinic, uh, make a copy of the one they are using there, or even um, draft yours and then complete it. So you are going to complete it for the um, pre uh, prescription uh, uh, three, uh, the, that, that uh, prescription, that's what you are using. And then, uh, You've got your dispensing calculations, um, which is which are very important uh, because when things go wrong here, we give wrong things to, to our patients, right? So you need to be able to do the calculations. So in the next few weeks, I will also take you through um, the calculations and how to do them. Uh, but if you go to, if in terms of calculations, you go to page um, 133, right? 
The essential drug dosage calculation, section 4.4.1. Uh, before you do that exercise, you need to read and read the examples that you need to try and emulate. Like, uh, uh, don't just copy. You know, maths, you must practice. Ne? And we are South Africans, most of us. And you know, in South Africa, we have a maths problem. So <laughs> you, you can't cram mathematics. So you've got a lot of examples with answers. So you're going to try and do all those calculations. As soon as you are done with the calculations, you go to this section and then uh, uh, they tell you that you have to uh, give this child an inhalant um, 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 and uh, do it and convert and so on. Yeah, so, so, um, so they are asking you a question there. Um, how many inhalers should be um, dispensed? if uh, it's a 60 days so how many so you have to look at well you know yeah i don't want to go into the details but the answer is there <laughs> in that page number um that i've showed you um on uh, uh, page 133 i'm hoping you have noted that so you do that you do the second one and then you 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 pass like that then section learning activity five, remember there are eight, so there's three more to go. I'm hoping we can finish shortly. It's about the patient information leaflet and how, how different is it from the package inset. And there you ask, you know, it's just a very basic um, 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 question. You have been provided with these uh, two, answer the following questions in your opinion, the two documents, a patient, uh, what you call, um, insert, uh, a package insert, so that paper that you find uh, which comes with the medicines uh, versus a patient information leaflet. What are the differences between the two, you know, and why and which one would really promote patient um, adherence? Is it both? Is it that package insert or is it something that you use as an IEC material for the patient? And you can see here, they've given you a patient information leaflet. And you can see the language is very simple. It's got the pictures and demonstrations, you know, to tell patients how to use the medicine. Then you've got a package insert. Ne? You can see it's written for doctors. It's got all these percentages and yay, 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 yay. So, you know, so what do you think is the difference between the two? And which of these two is, is, will, is likely to improve um, adherence. Um, and I don't want to give you a, 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 an answer, but I think already uh, you should know it. So if you go to page um, 185, page 185 there, uh, you will see, uh, let's see if I have it right. Uh, yes, uh, why am I not seeing what I'm looking for? What is this one? Providing instructions. So how do you counsel um, your patients? Let's go to, yes, patient information uh, leaflets, right? So you read and read, uh, you know, what is it and what makes it uh, better, you know, compared to a, a, a package insert. Uh, I think the differences are hidden there. You know, so I don't want to give you the answers, but uh, it's for you to then um, um, go through it um, again. I think also on the same page, so it's page 18, uh, what did we say? Page 185, you'll read until you go down. And then also page 33, uh, you'll see package inserts and patient information leaflets. So the regulation that regulates that every drug must have a package insert um, and then patient information leaflets uh, and that they, it must be very simple in one simple language, the composition, it must cover some of those things. And the answer to this question here, where you have to say what are the differences, uh, but in your opinion, which of the two documents would promote patient adherence? Do you think it's a package insert or a patient information leaflet? And then uh, once you give your answer, you state five reasons why you believe um, that um, is the case, right? So learning activity number six, drug interactions and case studies. This one is simple. You need to have your memes or your SAMF as a formula, your reference. 
Uh, however, I recommend that you visit uh, drugs.com. I don't think they have it here. It's a website. It's called drugs.com, www.drugs.com. It's got an interaction checker. And when we get to this section in the next few weeks, I will show you um, how to use it. You just look at the prescription. You take that uh, app, you add all the three drugs, and it will tell you which drugs you shouldn't give together and which ones you must avoid. But uh, obviously, um, here they're telling you the first activity is to choose the correct weight from the weights in the brackets. So you underline, you don't cross, you underline the correct weight or fill in the missing weight, right? So you're going to read uh, about these three drugs and then uh, you choose, right? Uh, choose. So after reading this, a, a, a history of this patient who's asthmatic and then was given certain drugs, uh, choose uh, uh, the drugs involved in the drug-drug interaction, you choose which one and which one. So you underline the two drugs and then propanolol is a what? Is it a selective or non-selective? And where there are missing spaces, you then complete like that until you complete. Then you do case study number two, the patient has one, two, three, four drugs and you read the case history in terms of what's happening to that patient and what, which drugs do you think are causing the drug-drug interaction. You underline and then you complete where there are spaces and so on, right? And in terms of your drug-drug interactions, uh, it's best to go to page um, 127 on your uh, study guide. So page 127, you go there, and then uh, you should get, um, did I get it all wrong? Because I don't think I'm seeing it. Maybe I got uh, uh, something wrong. I think I got the, 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 the page wrong, but uh, I will um, check it for you. Uh, 106, let's see if I'm, yes, contraindications. Yeah, interaction. So it starts there. Né? 106. For your drug drug interactions, it's page 106. You would then go through it and learn about drug interactions. How do they happen? Drugs can interact with food, drug can interact with other drugs. And then after that, you use your formulary. Like I said, I recommend that you on your phone you download the app. It's called a drug interaction checker, but it's from the website um, that we call um, uh, drugs.com, www.drugs.com. So I'll share also that with you on your groups so that you can um, refer to it. Right. I think we are getting somewhere. Um, and then you'll do the fourth case study. Some of these, uh, I will give you guidance when we get there. So the last two, uh, in terms of uh, uh, learning activity number seven, you have to develop a standard operating procedure, right? Um, and this is also guided by two uh, uh, key sections um, in the book. So let's go back to the book first. So in terms of learning activity number seven, write down page 191. That's where standard, and you can see standard operating procedure. So they tell you what procedures are and why procedures um, are important. So a procedure basically explains how work is done, right? And they also give you steps in, uh, 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 for example, basic steps in the procurement of stock. So these are part of the components of a procedure. So here you're gonna read about all the pharmacy procedures. Uh, for, for procuring, when to procure, how to order, um, you know, how you select products, how do you select uh, suppliers and prices. So, so you'll get all these uh, receiving stock. You see this one, please note it on a high note. So how do you receive stock, right? Uh, it tells you unpacking, you need to check the stock, you need to have a checklist so that you know what are the things that you must check. And you can see they have given you a checklist. You must verify the stock and all those kinds of things. Né? Um, so note that page. I said page 191, and you will go down um, um, to specific pages until the end. 
And then in terms of the SOP that you need to develop, page 270, right, of the guide, there's an example of an SOP and what an SOP. So you can say guidelines for writing an SOP. This is page 270. I hope you are writing down. Don't miss this. Hmm? So you can see guidelines for writing a standard operating procedure. So you can see they tell you it must have a title, it must have objectives, who's responsible for that SOP, and what are the actions that they need to do, and then uh, and and uh, and so on. So they give you the details, you know, um, around it, right? That's why when you go to the actual learning activity, you go to the to the task, right? They will tell you write the procedure. Uh, action part of the procedure for receiving of new stock from external suppliers. So that is the task. You're going to go to page 270. Firstly, you read from page 191 going down, you get to the actual procedure for receiving stock. You take that information and you do. Remember, the other way to do your POE very quickly is to visit a pharmacy and say, um, I'm doing dispensing. Um, I'm, I have to do my portfolio of evidence. May you kindly um, show me your procedure for receiving stock, you know, and then that will give you guidance. You can even take snapshots of it and submit it here with yours, with inputs on elements that maybe need to be improved, you know, um, um, and then that's it. Then, and you can see here's a template that you have to do receiving of new stock must start with the SOP number, the date, the, what policies this receiving must have, what are the objectives to ensure that the stock is correct and nothing is broken, the scope, who's responsible, and what are the actions, who will do what. The security will receive the stock, the manager will sign it off, the pharmacist will check if there's any expired medicine. So you do all those things um, as you receive um, your stock until um, 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 it's ended and then uh, you take it from there, right? So these are quite um, um, smart. Then you do your last learning activity. This one, what you need to do is to read the section, uh, the last section of the manual, uh, which is where um, I was at. So it's uh, all the pages from 190, page 190 to 220. So if you go to page um 190 this is your your medicine supply management right so you're gonna read this section six the whole of it because you need to know you know how, how procurement should work how the storage of medicines how to monitor and maintain stock how to maintain records so this is now the pharmacy management system how you manage the whole pharmacy or your dispensing unit and medicines and how to dispose expired and absolute medicines. Once you have read that, I said the page 190 to 220, then there's an audit tool. So you, you visit the pharmacy and say, hey guys, I'm doing a dispensing. Even if it's where you work at a clinic, at a hospital, if you are not working anywhere and you have no access, then you can approach it with your future clinic. And then you, on your comments, you'll be talking about how you are going to ensure that your clinic is going to meet this requirement. So this is just an audit to say in this pharmacy, yes, they have uh, this. No, they don't have, and I think they must improve this. Yes, they have, but it's partial, and I think they must have an SOP on one, two, three. So each section of that quality management system, it's an audit, yes, no, it's a tick sheet, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And I tell you what, once you are done with this, you are done with your portfolio of evidence. You now need to complete your summative multiple choice um, question. You submit them. If everything is in order, we book you for the final open book practical. It's actually a small uh, test. And then uh, that would be all. You pass and then you get your, your, your dispensing competency certificate. And then uh, by God's grace, you know, you pass and then uh, you are happy. And uh, we are also um, quite happy. Right. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this session.